A new deadline looms this weekend for President Trump to certify whether the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran is in the interest of the United States and if Iran is or is not complying with it. But how do Iranians see this deal and President Trump's tough words for the Islamic Republic? From Tehran and in partnership with the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting, special correspondent Reza Saya reports. Ashura in Tehran, one of the holiest days in Shia Islam. Thousands mourn the death of Imam Hussein, the Prophet Muhammad's grandson, a seven-century figure who stood against injustice and oppression. Many here say it's time to stand against what they see as the injustice of President Donald Trump. <laughs> He's insane. He's an insane person. We have to stand up to him. But Iranians are not just religious conservatives. Millions of young liberals live here, too, many shaped by American culture. They, too, have an opinion on President Trump. Trump just forces his way on everyone. He's a crazy person. <laughs> now we're going to get ourselves assassinated tomorrow. Liberal and conservative Iranians alike don't care much for President Trump these days because he says he wants to scrap the nuclear deal. The agreement signed in 2015 under then-President Barack Obama was a rare occasion where diplomacy appeared to resolve a crisis in a region plagued by war. The U.S. and world powers agreed to lift economic sanctions against Iran. In return, Iran rolled back its nuclear program, deemed a threat by the West. Like many Iranians, artist Maryam Mirkhatemi hoped the deal would help Iran's struggling economy and improve relations with the U.S. Now, she's worried again. Of course, everyone gets worried. It feels like something big is about to happen again. Things could get worse. We have to be ready for it. The Iran nuclear deal has been in effect for nearly two years. During that time, the IAEA, the UN's nuclear watchdog, has reported eight times that Iran is abiding by the terms. The world powers say the deal is working. Even President Trump's defense secretary says the U.S. should stick with the deal. But President Trump has repeatedly said the agreement is no good. Frankly, that deal is an embarrassment to the United States. Trump says the agreement doesn't address what Washington calls Iran's destabilizing actions in the Middle East. This is exactly uh, our criticism from the United States. Iranian political analyst Saeed Leilaz says Iran's conduct is purely reaction to U.S. policy that has long sought to isolate and weaken Iran. Our behavior in the region is exactly in accordance to United States behavior. If United States doesn't want to destabilize the country, my country, if they don't want to collapse the regime, they don't want to disturb us, you will see that the behavior of Tehran will be absolutely something else. Off Dubnet magazine covers social and cultural issues in Iran, and veteran journalist Amir Hossein Rasael says Washington has always vilified Iran. President Trump is no different. I don't know how Americans can believe Trump. Has there ever been an Iranian who fired a shot in America to be called a terrorist? Has there ever been an Iranian anywhere in the world who beheaded anyone? It was Saudis who destroyed the Twin Towers. I've never been to America, but I've met a lot of Americans who visit. All of them see within a week that this image of Iran created by American media is not real. The current deal doesn't address Iran's ballistic missile program, another reason President Trump doesn't like it. The world power's objective was to resolve Iran's nuclear issue with this agreement. Trump says the deal should have demanded restrictions on Iranian missiles that threaten U.S. interests. Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif says Iran is entitled to a missile program as a means to protect itself after the world failed to stop Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein from bombing Iran with chemical weapons. Our people were being bombed by missiles. We didn't have a single missile to defend ourselves. 
We didn't have a single missile to use as a deterrence. Aren't we obliged to our citizens to defend them? Today, Tehran's Peace Museum is a reminder of Iraq's toxic bombs and Washington's support for Saddam Hussein during the Iran-Iraq War, which lasted from 1980 to 1988, killing more than one million people on both sides. Inside one of the display cases sits a picture of the Iraqi dictator shaking hands with Donald Rumsfeld, then an advisor to President Ronald Reagan. In recent days, there have been some reports that Iran is willing to discuss its ballistic missile program to ease U.S. concerns. But many here say making additional concessions won't make a difference because what Washington is really after is regime change. Many Iranians view this as an ultimate motive of U.S. policy that's been in place since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. This is the reality. They're after regime change. Does anyone think otherwise? I think yes, of course. This is in the, on their agenda. Zainab Ghassami is professor of American studies at Tehran University. Ghassami says the 70 percent turnout in Iran's presidential elections, re-electing moderate Hassan Rouhani, a champion of the deal, illustrates a lack of popular support for regime change. And when you don't have this inside support, internal support, then you have to bring other, you know, things into it, like putting sanctions. Uh, on the country, making it weak and weaker. Despite the nuclear agreement, the U.S. has imposed new sanctions against Iran, unrelated to its nuclear program. Analysts here say those sanctions continue to deter foreign investment and cripple key sectors of the economy. Apple and Google cited U.S. sanctions when they banned Iranian apps and services for Iranian users. It was a huge blow to a high-tech industry that was depending heavily on the benefits of the nuclear agreement. Of course, this is discouraging for a young generation that was eager to start working in the tech industry. I think they were 100 percent dependent on the nuclear deal. And now they've lost that hope. Iranian leaders say if President Trump decertifies the deal and the U.S. reimposes nuclear sanctions, they may revive their nuclear program. Many Iranians expect tough times ahead, but hold out hope that the international community will help keep the agreement intact. When you have something called the UN and they're doing their job, then they have to defend the deal. If they don't, then there's nothing we can do. Many here say regardless of the outcome, President Trump's handling of the nuclear deal proves what Iran's hardliners have said all along, that Washington can never be trusted. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Reza Seah in Tehran.